Mahdi, can you tell him how to share the... Yes, yes. We, we have to do a test before. So... Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Test good. now. Yes, yes. Perfect. Okay, now? Very nice. Okay. Okay, so I will speak about spinal neural AV fistulas. The picture is from the Great Wall in China. So here is a nice sentence and very important sentence. So we should write down what we have done if it is of use to others. This sentence was in the front of the great PLS Hermes Nemi book on the London Ontario vertebral bacillar aneurysm, aneurysms, the huge experience that can never be repeated. But this is a very, very important sentence. If you read it and think about it, so it means that you should write down, you should publish if it is useful. So I counted in Helsinki some years ago, how many spinal vascular malformations I have done. And you have to remember Finland is a small country, 5.5 million people and uh, only southern part of Finland is sending uh, patients to Helsinki. So out of these vascular malformations, there are, uh, I could include tumors, vascular tumors, hemangioplastomas, then you have spinal cavernomas, then you have real arteriovenous malformations and the topics of this evening, neural arteriovenous fistulas. So one of the important things in Finland is there is extremely good and perfect follow-up. And this is very few countries in the world what I have seen. So I have been around the world as Professor Abt mentioned, I have seen that many neurosurgeons have, neurosurgeons have no idea how the patients are doing after surgery. Six months, one year, 10 years later. So this is extremely important and we should give a lot of uh, uh, importance on the follow-up. But in Finland, it can be, <coughs> every case can be followed up until death. And we know also the uh, cause of death of every person living in Finland. So I counted, this is 15 years period of mine. You see in Helsinki, during this time, 15 years, I operated 19 hemangioplastomas, spinal hemangioplastomas, 20 spinal cavernomas, seven spinal arteriovenous malformations and 19 dural AV fistulas. So the number is low, number is low. So here, this is Professor Ling Feng is from China. She's working in Beijing. She has done more than 1000 dural AV fistulas, spinal dural AV fistulas. So you see the dif difference in experience. And uh, one of the advantage of Finland is that we have extremely good follow-up. As I mentioned, in, can you hear me? In China, follow-up is extremely difficult because the huge population and uh, uh, many times you lose the patient and uh, many cases are done in Beijing and Shanghai. So they are coming all over the China and uh, so the follow-up is difficult. So follow-up is actually many times, only the time patient is after surgery in the hospital. So, but anyhow, large experience here, extremely large experience, but we can compete with the follow-up because this is very important for that. The picture is from the operation area in Helsinki neurosurgery. So this is my experience. This tiny experience on spinal vascular malformation, but large experience, personal experience on microsurgery. So more than 16,000 surgeries, more than 6,000 of them are cerebral aneurysms, more than 600 cerebral AVMs, and then more than 100 spinal vascular malformations. We are speaking now today. So they are rare, rare lesions. They are rare lesions. So 
why I in, became interested in the spinal uh, vascular malformation. I, when I was resident in 1970s, there was a thin book from Amin of Great Britain on the on the disease, and I read this book, and then I went to Eastern Finland to work, and in 1983, I had my first case diagnosed for spinal dura AV fistulas, and it was totally different that time. It was Yasaki who made long laminectomies to extirpate <coughs> the ven venous convoluts, and I followed his strategy. You see how mutilating operation I did. This is 1983. This is 40 years ago. It was a male, 36 years old, had progressive paraparesis. We diagnosed this uh, dural AV fistulas, and I made surgery, a standard surgery for that time, made long laminectomy, eight level laminectomy. And uh, then after that, I resected the convolute. This is after after surgery, you see. I took all the vein out. Patient was worse after operation, but then recovered. And I have seen him uh, 25 years later. He had a lumbar disc. Lumbar disc, not this level, but uh, it, it is actually a miracle that he made such a good recovery after this mutilating operation. And this is very important. When I made this operation, I was... We were very few in Eastern Finland, only three. And we were on call nearly all the time. So I had operated in the night, two hematomas alone. And then I came after a few hours to sleep to make this long, uh, long uh, difficult operation for me at that time. It was extremely cold, minus 40. I remember that very well. So this was... Uh, January 1983. Okay, but the times changed. So neurosurgeons were completely wrong in understanding these spinal dural AV fistulas. We made mutilating operation. Our hero, number one neurosurgeon in the world, Yasaki, made these operations. But the endovascular surgeons and uh, neuroradiology stopped this mutilation of the patients. It was the first publication was 1977. But of course, it takes always some time to uh, have the knowledge spread around. So it changed totally, totally. The good diagnostics changed totally. <coughs> the treatment of these lesions and uh, what is our goal in treatment? We have to be better than the natural history of these diseases. And we know from the early book of Aminov that these lesions have usually very bad outcome. They deteriorate and they patients may get become then paraplegic rather suddenly. So this is how it goes. So we should be rather active in treating these cases when we have diagnosed them, not to follow up because the, the deterioration can come suddenly and then you cannot uh, help the patients anymore. So there are two, uh, three different kinds of patients in, with the spinal dura AV fistulas. I have seen only one incidental finding here in China. Here you make very good checkups health controls, and this patient had a long thoracal spinal dural AV fistula without any symptoms. But uh, when discussing about that, I recommended it to be treated with nowadays means, because if the symptoms begin, they are difficult to stop. Then you have patients which have progressive paraparesis with moderate or severe deficit, and then you have patients where the disaster has already occurred, they, have, they are paraplegic. And this one, according to my experience, you can no, no more help. So it is very important to be 
in good time in treating these lesions. And uh, one of the things I told that endovascular surgeons, neuroradiologists, brought the level of uh, treatment to the non mutilating level. So, but uh, very few of these spinal dural AV fistulas can be treated by only endovascular means because it means that the patient has a, a recidive and many times you cannot embolize because of the involvement of the anterior spinal artery. So how to treat? You should have a target where to go, not to do like I made 40 years ago, eight level laminectomy and others also in the world did. You have to have correct targeting. You have to do spinal angiography and then you know which level the spinal rural AV fistula is fed and then you can do operation. So once more selecting the patients, I would operate early these cases because they deteriorate and usually you cannot improve the patients by operation, but you can stop the symptoms. And usually patients with total deficit are not benefiting of surgery. But of course, if these are rare cases, so it might be good to operate on because then you get training in treating these cases. But you cannot promise the patient it will be better after operation. So how I learned to operate later after this terrible mutilating operation is to do exactly at the level of the fistula hemilaminotomy. It means that the patient has a stable spine and I do all the operation and the microscope. And one of the important things in spinal surgery, when you are going intradurally, especially, you have to have absolute hemostasis and you should spend time for the hemostasis. And then I will show two videos, one longer one, and then one to repeat, one shorter one of this operation. So they tell more than these slides. You have to close carefully, otherwise you might have CSF fistula and you should not remove the stitches too early at the thoracal <coughs> level. You should have the stitches long. My practice has been two weeks because the patient is straining so the wound may open and it's very difficult to uh, get it back. So, and then complications here, of course, you can have all kinds of complications of usual uh, doing the wounds, but you, especially CSF leakage is possible. That's why you should be extremely careful in closing infections, wound descents. I want already instability with proper minimal operations. No, but if you make laminectomy, large laminectomies, then it is, it may of course happen and then worsening of the neurological state may happen and you might have thromboembolic complication because the patient has paraparesis and uh, depending on the paraparesis, decubitus and uh, there are also at the cervical level, these lesions here, Professor Xu has more than 30, has more than 30 cases of this cervical dural AV fistula. This is a big number and every week I tell him that he should publish these cases, but it takes time here. So how to do better? I will show the videos at the end, but uh, how, how can you do better here in treating these patients? I have, what I have learned during my microsurgical career, so use high magnification when you are using the microscope, then finer, finer instruments. And very important in the spinal surgery when doing spinal tumors, spinal 
vascular malformation is that you have a very good hemostasis before opening the dura. And one of the tricks is put the positioning of the patient. We use the, we call it Helsinki mecha position, but it is genopectoral position like praying. praying. So it means that there is no pressure in the veins. So it's very nice to do spinal surgery in this, uh, this position. And then here we, uh, in Henan Provincial People's Hospital, we have two hybrid rooms where you can do angiography and uh, open microsurgery at the same time and controlling what you are doing. And so this is very important. I have never used a hybrid room, as you see in my, in my videos. We had a different solution because in Helsinki, we didn't have any hybrid room and uh, there were many lacks, lacks in, uh, in uh, not having that kind of uh, intraoperative MRI, not intraoperative uh, angiography, but you can do also good microsurgery without these means. But uh, they help if you can use them. So, <laughs> this was the number of spinal durai fistulas I made in Helsinki in 15 years, so one or two cases a year. Maybe they were increasing in, in the last years because the more neuroradiology and neurologists were on the road. So, I still think that this should be treated by surgery by microsurgery to occlude the fistula point and with very sophisticated, accurate spinal angiography, you can find a level of the, of the lesion and you should do the operation only at this level. So here is spinal angiography, the feeding artery has been found and you see the big venous convolute, convolute which you saw also in my, my long laminectomy operation. So the principle that time was that you should take them out, but this is nonsense. You have to occlude only the fistula here, here at this level. So you have to go there. So, and here is one more. Thoracal five feeder, and this is postoperative control. You should do postoperative in operating hybrid room. You see immediately if you have occluded the whole fistula, so it is no need. So, this is one of the advantages. So, one important thing here you should see the patients after operation. So, what I can say from my small series that you cannot do them better by surgery, but you can stop the disease. So the progression of the paraparesis is stopped. And you should follow up the cases really to know how they fare after surgery. So, because these are rare cases, like there are in neurosurgery are many cases uh, which are extremely rare. They should be centralized. It is not so that uh, Everyone is doing everything in neurosurgery. You should do many cases and specialize, subspecialize to do some special area. Certainly, you have a big population in Morocco, so you have a lot of patients. So uh, there are certainly cases which are better treated by subspecializations. Like my teacher, Pierre said, we are serving the patients well. So this is very important. So this is from modified from our book, Drake Pierre's Ernest Nemi. They are rare lesions and they should be centralized in few hands to have experience from this case. And now I saw two videos. I hope now I...
It's running, yeah. So this is uh, edited by Daniel Kosurov. He was a Russian fellow now working in Israel. This was a spinal 68 years old male with spinal thoracal fistula. And this is uh, the position. And uh, yeah, maybe I, I opened, uh, I was not so sure about the level, so I made a longer incision. But the, the trick we used in Helsinki was to put the uh, in X-ray department, metal and blue to see exactly the level. So you see, now I, I do also the soft tissue work under microscope to be more accurate. So this uh, everything is done under microscope. The movements are coming from the mouthpiece in the microscope. So. I'm moving the microscope all the time. And this is one of the big things Professor Yasakil, our teacher brought in microsurgery. You have a mouthpiece so you can be mobile all the time with your microscope. So this means a lot that makes the operations by far faster. I have not counted, but my estimate is that if you can learn to use the mouthpiece, then your operations get 30, 40% faster because you are not moving the microscope all the time. And then I make, uh, this is the level. I use a big diamond drill to make laminotomy. Big diamond drill is very, very safe and very fast. So you take both sides lamina and it is not going inside. If you use a small or drill or then very sharp drill, then it can go inside the spinal channel through the ligament and dura even. Then taking ligamentum flavum with Gerson rongus out. And uh, then here you have to take a look on the epidural veins because of the positioning of the patient. They are not distended, but if you bite on them, then you might have difficult bleeding. And here again, taking more laterally with the diamond drill. Now you see, we have a good anatomy. We see already dura here. We take more bone out. And now below the burr, Tip of the diamond, what, what is that? China is attacking, advertisement, okay? So all the time giving water and then we will come. You will see already if you are on the right level by drilling, you will see the big vessels. And then coagulating, these are epidural veins, and then very good hemostasis on the surroundings. This is a tacosil or something. And then surgery cell, and doing everything before opening the dura, which is happening here. I open the dura nearly totally with the knife and then continue with the hook in the same road. And here we see the arachnoid. And then all the time, careful hemostasis not to lose. And now I put a stitch here. And you see how the blood is disturbing. Blood is coming from epidural now. But I put stitches there and put them tight so the bleeding will stop. And you can use also glue, glue in the epidural spaces. But now you see the huge fistula. This is, this is the right place, certainly. Certainly, and uh, dissecting the arachnoid here. OK. 
careful now. Now we usually met ICT here. Endoceanate green. I put the clip here. This is holding the arachnoid. But usually I left a clip because to be sure that we have been on the right level. But here is no doubt we have been in the right level because this is the fistula site here. I think now is ICG coming. When we cut the ICG, it was maybe 2000. 2005 or six, and we began to use everywhere, also in the spinal fistulas. Now it's coming, yeah. it gives nice pictures. Maybe not extremely helpful, but all information is important. I'm squeezing the fistula here, and then there are some people who are telling just put the clip. I don't think this is good because if you put the clip, clip may, may, may slip. It's better to coagulate the whole fistula. So here is one artery. So you coagulate them and here. And I also coagulate the dura there. There are recommendations you should resect the dura. But I think this is not, not extremely good. When you resect dura, then you have a hole in the dura and you have epidural bleedings from there. They will go inside the spinal channel. So I think it is good, good to leave the dura intact, not to resect, just to coagulate. And here we are cutting the fistula, so it should be certainly treated and not recur. Here is the this is a high magnification. This is Yasakil microschizo. So it looks like alligator under the magnification. And then dissecting more. This is medulla. And now I put the <coughs> VEC clip there. I take the first one out. I don't know why. I actually put there, but sometimes you make things you cannot explain in surgery. I took it out, so this one stays here, so you, you, you can see it as a control of the level. And now I coagulate again the dura here. Yeah. And then I turn the <coughs> stitches across. Then I have the Dura. Dura can be closed. It's difficult to close the Dura in that kind of very small hole. So I'm using here the small clips I'm moving the microscope all the time it's mobile microscope so I can also work outside and then I go with on the higher magnification now you have the dura here no bleedings and then that kind of one more clip for level and then the dura is closed with these small vascular clips, which you can put after each other in a line. It's a little bit too small here. Yeah, it's, it's working.
So this is the line of the clips, and then I put uh, glue and oxygen, and this is post-operative pictures, and this is post-operative angio. And this was the team, international team, doing the videos. And then there is a, to repeat, there is by far shorter video of the same, not the, from the same patient, but same lesion. Edited by a Chinese fellow, Qian Qian. This was Thoracal 7. This is shorter. So you, here you see the convolutes in MRI. And this is final angio. You see the veins. And here is a proper incision, shorter incision. And I do everything under microscope, also the skin incision. And here it goes. Here is the medulline blue sign made in x-ray department and then we have accurate level to work and trying to make as clean as possible the spinal surgery. There is not a very good retractor for this one-sided laminectomy, uh, laminotomy, I didn't find, but of course there exist. So this is a regular adson retractor where you put the other plate more down and then very carefully and again with the large grill you do the laminotomy and uh, this large tip of the diamond drill protects the spinal channel here we take kerosene the ligamentum flavum away you see the bleeding now the bleeding is coming is coming easily. Glue is very good. If you have glue, you can inject in the epidural space. Here, making the opening larger. Sometimes the spinous process are in the front of you, so you can make them a little bit thinner by the diamond drill. And here again, opening the dura partially, not true with the knife. And then you see the arachnoid, and then you go with the blunt hook and uh, here you see the needle uh, made a hole in arachnoid so all the CSF was coming out and uh, when CSF is coming out then you might have epidural bleeding so that's why it's very important to have very good hemostasis and here you see again the same thing and uh, with ICG the feeder and here I coagulate it extradural. Now both sides of the dura, bipolar is going, and uh, now coagulating feeder and cutting. And I think uh, this this should be the final solution for this dura. Fistula it cannot recur at this place, but after good surgery, it was unfortunate that some patients <clears throat> deteriorated by nice surgery and very few improved. Actually, the state of the paraparesis remained the same. So I think this treatment gives results. It is stopping the disease. And, uh, I think this was all I wanted to say. You saw the background, you saw the two videos, and maybe I, we can now begin to discuss. If there are questions, I'm ready to answer. Thank you very much. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Hennes Nimi, for uh, for uh, this uh, uh, this presentation on this uh, uh, very quite rare pathology. Uh, uh, you, you 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 have seen, uh, uh, as you said, during uh, uh, maybe fifteen years.
years, uh, 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 just 19 cases in, uh, in, in, in the country. Uh, uh, and I, I know that, uh, that you had uh, the, the, best, uh, the best epidemiological data regarding uh, uh, all cerebral and the spinal cord uh, 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 vascular malformations. Because uh, in Helsinki, uh, you were uh, uh, gathering almost all the cases of the country, as the country is with quite small population, 5 million. So you know exactly, and you have published exactly the, the incidence of these malformations. So we, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it makes around maybe three or five cases, uh, million uh, inhabitants. Uh, the, the, I think that the, the most, uh, uh, some aspect uh, I would like to, to, to heard you to clarify them is uh, how, how you classify this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, dural uh, AV fistula, uh, spinal uh, dural fistula. Uh, what, uh, you have shown us two uh, 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 typical cases with direct uh, 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 fistula of, uh, of a small artery in, in, in a large vein, but an, uh, all located in the, in the dorsal area of the, of the, 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 the subdural uh, uh, space. Have you seen uh, cases where the fistula is located more ventrally or cases where the, the fistula with the, with the, the, the feeding arteries uh, uh, come more from the epidural space and how to, how to deal with these with this cases? And secondly, which, which I, I, I have seen, you have shown us that you are using the, 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 the spinal angiography, I think, in all the cases. Uh, is it possible today to, to have a location uh, only, for example, with, uh, with Anjou uh, CT scan, uh, or it's absolutely necessary to have the, to have the, 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 the angiography? And maybe there are certainly many other, other questions. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, what, what is your comment about this problem of, uh, of classification? I mean, the location and about the, 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 the radiological uh, uh, images you use to, 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 uh, uh, to localize the fistula, because this is the most important problem, is to go directly to the, to the, the, to the fistula. And it's, it's very small, uh, very small lesion, so not uh, so easy. I... Of course, with my experience, you cannot classify. You have to ask uh, Ling Feng, Ling Feng, Ling Feng, who has treated more than one thousand cases. With that kind of material, you can classify. You have all the rare cases. Here in Henan Provincial People's Hospital, I asked Professor Xu how many he has done in ten years. He told that he has done around two hundred in this hospital. And uh, he, you have cervical, they are extremely rare, cervical, dural AV fistulas, and then you have sacral, which are even more rare. I have seen both of them here in Henan Provincial People's Hospital in China. I have seen both uh, cervical and sacral. But uh, in Finland, I have seen only this dorsal, which are the most common form maybe 85 or even 90 percent of the cases. So thoracal, they are common and usually they are, uh, they are, the feeders are like shown in the angio and operations. I, I don't think that you can operate on these cases without spinal angiography. It means that you have, you have to have skilled and uh, neuroradiologists to do the spinal angiography. Otherwise, you will go to wrong level and are doing something and you believe you have done something and then it, it must be spinal angiography. This is absolutely necessary to treat these lesions well. But uh, then, of course, you have many in a big material. You can, of course, uh, when you have 
more than 1,000 cases you can classify, but with my few cases, I can only say that I have operated only on dorsal, thoracal, dural fistulas, which are most common. And then cervical, dural fistulas, I have seen here many because they are accumulated by Professor Su. And now I have seen also sacral, sacral dural fistula, but they are extremely rare. I try to get the people to publish these cases because they are so rare. I have never seen in my life. Yeah, and, and you have mentioned the, 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 the role, the greater role of the, of, the, of the endovascular treatment. And of course, Linkfin is one of the, of the, uh, of the of, uh, I think, neurosurgeons who has the, the, the as you said, the, the largest series. So uh, today now in, in, the, in the hospital where you are, of course, I think in Helsinki, uh, you, you, you were operating uh, uh, almost all, 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 all uh, uh, cases, all patients, but now uh, are you still operating all patients or there are others who are going to the, to the, to the, the endovascular? And what is, what is today the rate of success of the endovascular? I think these are still surgical cases in the most. Uh, I, I don't know what Ling Feng is now thinking, but uh, I have heard her lecture. It was surgery. It was microsurgery for, to treat these cases. So because they are difficult to treat without recurrences by, by endovascular means. So the surgery is good. And if you have a good spinal angiography, you see the level. So it is rather simple to do. So have you seen cases of recurrence after endovascular treatment? You yes, have treated? Yes, yes, but uh, I'm not speaking about large experience. I always say that uh, if my experience is small, then I say it is small. Yeah. If I speak about anorism, I can say that it is thousands of cases. But here I speak only very few cases. But I think this is what I have shown is accurate treatment and good treatment for these lesions. lesions. But uh, there has been uh, recurrences. I have had, uh, I have operated once in the wrong level. I thought I'm at right level, but it was not. So I had to reoperate and so it's not so simple than in videos, but uh, usually it is, it is nice operation when you are at the right level. And the hybrid room, if you have hybrid room, then of course you are always at the, at the right level. But uh, I prefer to do uh, laminotomy in these cases. I have seen that the laminectomy is done, but I think this is unnecessary if you have exact level of the lesion. You are very modest, my dear Joha. You, 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 it's a great experience. It's not, it's not so small world experience. The world is so full. World is so full of great neurosurgeons. So it is. Uh, I think uh, if you have done 19 cases of something, you are not great specialist. But of, co of course, the background is you have done so many other cases. So it means that you might do good surgery also in these rare cases. So our, it depends on our culture. So uh, for example, in Finland, I have seen two tuberculomas in my life. And in many countries, they are the most common, common uh, brain tumor. So it, it depends where you are working and so what is your experience. So, but you should. Yeah, I, I see uh, uh, Sisaid raising yes. his hand. Yes. Please yes, go thanks. on. Maybe you have a question or comment. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you, Professor Kamlishi. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Bezinski, for this. Uh, <laughs> Very informative uh, presentation. My uh, my question. I have many questions, but uh, I start by uh, by two questions about. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, according to pathophysiological between uh, fist, the spinal uh, dural fistula, arteriovenous fistula, and AVA, there is any uh, difference techniques between two these types of, of uh, malformation, vascular malformation. This, this is the first question. Professor Hamlishi, to the, um, before he said about recurrence after angiography, uh, embolization, uh, after embolization, but why 
you when you coagulate uh, the afferent artery you make uh, the vascular clip clips into the uh, or throughout the the dura this my my question thank you i didn't catch uh, some some uh, some uh, troubles can you repeat the last sentence yeah. Uh, why we, when you coagulate the afferent artery for dural fistula, you make the, 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 the vascular clips in a trout the, the dura. Why? Ah, to see the level. Radiologists never believe that you have been in the right level. It's just very simple to leave a clip. I leave a clip where I have been. It is very simple. This just, uh, I think it is good practice if you are operating on a lumbar disc and you are suspicious if this is the right level or not, then you leave a clip, then you know. And uh, this is all. Huh? Yes. It doesn't hurt. This clip doesn't hurt anyone. You can, to control your own work, you leave a clip where you have been. This is my my practice and uh, I have been leaving small clips in many places just to show that I have been in the right place because many people may, might say that you have not been there and it is also to control in the spinal surgery the, the level control of level is one of the most important things things so you might operate on the wrong level and uh, you don't know it but oh. if you who Take wants a, to ask question or make comment? Uh, Professor Hamlich, I, 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 I said uh, before that uh, when, uh, if you now, if you have to choose between embolization and uh, surgery, what do you choose for the dural artery of the fistula? Uh, without doubt, surgery, surgery. This is surgery. This is so simple reason and you can occlude it totally with surgery and the operation is minimal, minimal operation. I think also those who are doing embolizations agree with that because there are recurrences and then you have might have a clue in the wrong place. Surgery is not going in the, in the wrong place because it is going in the exact place. It is not, uh, I have given up many surgeries because I see that endovasculars are doing better in many aspects, so why to do surgery? But here, I think it is it is good to do surgery. This, I, I, until now, I stick to that, and I have seen also other who are very eager to do endovascular surgery are thinking the same way. Yeah. Other, other questions. Is Professor Gzez? Yes. Well, <laughs> Yeah. Yes, go on. Thank you, Professor Hamdishi, and thank you, Professor Zohar. I want to ask about the useful of uh, or the utility of uh, uh, stereotactic, stereotactic radio surgery in cases of complex and recurrent spinal dural arteriovenous fissure. I. I'm doubtful, I'm very doubtful in that. You are giving radio surgery close to the spinal, the Stem. medulla, which has, has already difficulties with the, with the blood circulation. So I think, uh, I think these are simple lesions. You should not do radio surgery. These are good surgical lesions. And the complex, what is complex here? Uh, if durale fistulas are not, complex. They have one or two levels. The feeders, of course, you can find then some mixed, which are like AVMs. Spinal AVMs are totally different. They are, they are more difficult than this dural AV fistulas, but uh, then you might have mixed lesions, huge lesions, rare lesions. You see them maybe only once in life. And uh, even in metropolitan hospitals, which are collecting many cases, you see very few of them. So 
I think uh, radio surgery has in the treatment of spinal pleural heavy fist plus very little to do. In many other places, of course, it's very useful. But here I would doubt to do because the surgery is so simple and uh, to irradiate uh, one level, I wouldn't think it is helpful. And because the progression of the disease is rather fast, when you have diagnosed, you have to stop it immediately, sure. not to wait. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I think in uh, uh, cerebral AVMs, so the takes two to three years that the AVM is uh, thrombosed. So I, I don't think it is different in spinal cases. Yeah. So Maybe. dural and fistulas are deteriorating very quickly. You should treat them fast with the most simple treatment. Other, other questions? Uh, Professor Aysbin Ali. <coughs> Ali Z, where is? Uh, hello, hello everybody. Thank you, Professor Khmlishi, Professor Hilmani, Dr. Welcome, Mary. welcome. Thank you very much, Professor Hernizimi, for uh, this nice uh, lecture. Uh, please, have you seen uh, patients with multiple fistulas? No. Thank you. No. Certainly, there exist in large areas. Yeah. Yes, Mehdi, other question? Professor uh, Mzgmut. Thank you. Sibin Zgmut, where is where's Kili? Yeah. Yes. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, sir. Thank you, Professor, for this uh, interesting lecture. I have uh, two questions. The first question is about, is about uh, some particularities of uh, spinal dural EV fistula. Uh, what is your experience ab uh, about uh, iatrogenic uh, dural fistula as uh, well as filum terminal fistula? And the second question, uh, we have uh, some EV spinal fistula with uh, 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 artery, arteries feeding uh, coming from uh, the anterior spinal cord artery, how to deal uh, uh, about uh, this uh, uh, cases? Thank you. Uh, the anterior spinal artery is extremely difficult, to, difficult, difficult. Of course, we know that the occlusion of the anterior spinal artery might uh, have the patient tetraplegic. So this is very, very difficult. So I, I cannot give that answer. We have seen that kind of case and we were, uh, we were wondering what to do in this case. What are those iatrogenic fistulas? I don't know. I have never seen. You mean arteriovenous fistula iatrogenic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iatrogenic uh, uh, secondary uh -huh. to, 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 lumbar, to lumbar disc uh, sur surgeries uh, and so on. Uh -huh. um, I have seen only that uh, you go through the Corporeal vertebrae, and then you have the, the iliac, iliac artery. You have the lesion, and then arteriovenous fistula there, but not in the spinal channel. I have not seen. I don't know what to do. But of course, they are. I think they are not different, different to treat. Of course, you have to have good angiography. Then you see the lesion, and this might be good for endovascular treatment because you, you are you have the fistula inside the scar, so it is more difficult to treat by surgeries. They, this might be very good for endovascular surgery. Anterior spinal artery, so it is case, you have to see case by case. So it's extremely difficult and uh, de delicate and uh, always a difficult problem. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, uh, regarding this, this question of the anterior spinal uh, uh, fistula, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 Professor Juhar, if you if you if you agree, but uh, but I, I, in general, these uh, this this group of uh, of uh, 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 DAVM uh, are uh, are having a drainage uh, uh, outside the, the 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 outside the dura. 
So uh, they, 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 they give very, very rarely the, the clinical symptoms. And, and, uh, and the, the unfortunately, because of course, the, they are, they are uh, absolutely very, very difficult to operate. But regarding this iatrogenic, I don't know if Dr. Benzigmut has, has a special uh, experience about that because it seems to me quite uh, strange uh, to have uh, to have uh, 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 dural arteriovenous fistula after uh, herniated disc or after laminectomy for another uh, for another uh, another disease, but of course it's it's it, it remains something uh, maybe possible. But if you have several of these uh, after surgery. Arteriovenous fistulas, you should publish them because they must be extremely rare if you have some of yeah. them. So this interesting series. But the, I think I think there is a you have to differentiate with spinal AVMs and dural AV fistulas. They are different different lesions, and uh, so I think uh, the spi anterior spinal arteries seldom involved in the even in the cervical dural AV fistula, so this can be safely treated. Treated. It is not. <coughs> yes, yes. There is a, there is a Professor Lasri who wants to ask a, a question. Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, Lasri, where is it? Thank you, thank you, Professor Hamishi. Uh, thank you for uh, Professor Juha. Donc, I would like to ask you uh, about uh, uh, in cases where we have a dural arteriovenous fistula in the level of T12 or L1, when the Adam Kivix uh, artery arrives in this uh, site, is it uh, in, uh, in center when we don't have intraoperative angiography? Do we uh, also risk for patient uh, coagulation uh, knowing that? Uh, also, neuroradiologists are uh, fair uh, for, to, to treat this, uh, this pathology. Thank you. But the, I think uh, Adankiewicz is dangerous only if you try to do by endovascular means, not by surgery. If you find the fistula site, then it is safe to do surgery. Okay, so and there was a case with the uh, Adam Kevitz after he was involved. There was long discussion here how to do, but the, the final solution was surgery. But also, which we don't have, we don't have interoperative uh, angiography. No, I don't have. Also, I have never used. I told you in the beginning, I have never had had uh, intraoperative angiography. That's why you see the methylene blue sign in my operations in the videos. Here, in this hospital in China, there are, in, in Henan Provincial People's Hospital, there are two hybrid rooms. Mm -hmm. So you can do whatever you want. But I never tried, because there are more skillful guys who are taking the cases, these cases. So okay. I, I didn't operate any any dura, spinal dura fistula here, even I would have done if they come to me, but they are not coming. So it's okay. It's when they... Also, another yeah. question. Thank you. Uh, what's about when we have a, a huge bleeding from the epidural space uh, when removing facet? Uh, do you think that we can uh, just uh, coagulate the epidural space uh, and uh, put a clip uh, Extradurally in the root may be sufficient to exclude the, 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 the fistula? Uh, I think the epidural bleedings, to stop them, it begins from the positioning of the patient. You have to be very extremely careful with the positioning of the patients for spinal operations. If the, if the patient is canopectoral and the abdomen is free hanging, between arms and legs, then you don't have distended epidural veins. But if the uh, little bit fatty patient is lying li lying on the belly, then you have might have terrible bleedings from the epidural veins. So this is uh, extremely much to do with the positioning of the patient. So I 
strongly recommend the genobacterial position for all kind of spine surgery to take care of them. And then uh, when you have epidural bleedings, uh, glue is one good thing to inject glue in the epidural space. It stops the bleedings and uh, never open dura before you have absolute good hemostasis in the epidural space. And if you have big bleeding, then you should, should uh, what, what in bony bleedings, you can use the diamond, big diamond drill. The bony bleeding stop with diamond drill. You may use bone wax, but the, the big diamond drill is extremely effective to stop the bony bleedings and then bipolar for the epidural veins. So I think uh, this, uh, it doesn't happen. Like I have seen as resident, I have seen many liters of bleeding in lumbar disc operation from epidural veins because of poor positioning. But if you have a good positioning and take very much care of the compression of the vena cava, so you don't have that kind of epidural bleeding. So it is a great pleasure and big difference to do spinal surgery in this good position. This is my, my tricks and experience. Yeah, Simadi. There is some question in the chat. Can I read it? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, Professor Nasiro Ismail from Nigeria asks, uh, how do you differentiate uh, feeding vessels from the venous drainage? Uh, the feeding vessels are coming inside the dura, dura and uh, going, going to the large arterial, arterialized uh, vessel, let's say vessel, because it, it, it has also thick wall. It is the beginning of the venous convolute. It is, uh, it is academic question. So you coagulate and cut. So it is, uh, it is not exact points, but the small arteries are coming in the dura and conjoining and feeding this big, uh, big vessel with thick wall going to the venous convolutes. But this is, did I answer your question? Yeah. Here's a question of uh, Dr. Uh, Nasiru. Another question in the chat uh, <coughs> from uh, Mohammed Abdu, who asked, can you please tell us uh, what type of uh, dural arteriovenous fistula do you operate on and uh, when it will be contract contraindicated to do surgery. This, uh, I told in the lecture that usually if the patient is paraplegic from this spinal dorae fistula, you cannot help him or her. You cannot promise that I will heal you. But of course, because these are rare lesions, so I prefer to do because uh, just to get some experience. So if you always say it, it is of no use, then you are not doing anything. So it is, but uh, you have to, total paraplegia is not improving in these cases. Of course, there might be patients who are extremely fatty or old or debilitated, but uh, I think there are a few contraindications for this operation because it is rather simple and simple operation. The diagnosis is more difficult to make the spinal good spinal angiography is more demanding i think than the operation itself so this is this is, is a very important uh, uh, question uh, 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 dr juha uh, the, the, you you are you prefer i mean the, the, the surgical indication for you as you have shown is when patients is still asymptomatic or when uh, his or she's with slight symptoms. And what we see in this pathology is uh, uh, it's, very, uh, it's, it's very difficult to diagnose and maybe is one of the reasons uh, uh, it's quite not so frequent. Uh, so what is in your experience, the, the first symptoms who, were, who guided the patients to have images and to be diagnosed? Is it, for example, back pain? Is it uh, radicular pain? Uh, is it fatigue from time to time? 
which kind of, uh, of, uh, of symptoms which can be considered as a key uh, to think on the diagnosis of uh, a spinal uh, uh, dural arteriovenous uh, fistula, and then, of course, to try to make the diagnosis and to make him operated. I think uh, these patients are going to many doctors, and uh, finally one will find out. So this is a very difficult diagnosis. But the uh, intermittent going numbness, weakness, this should give some suspicion. And the patients are going to many doctors. This is usually, they had been by many doctors. So it is uh, maybe in the last years, they were more easily recognized because you have MRI. If you have some numbness in the lower extremities, they make MRI, and then you see the venous convolute. Then you, this is by far earlier diagnosis than in earlier times. So with MRI, peculiar symptoms in lower, uh, lower uh, in the legs, you will finally do MRI. I, I think. Uh, it depends, of course, on the culture and country, but uh, I, I had the feeling that more and more of these rare cases are diagnosed when the MRI, of course, when the MRI came. So maybe, maybe the most important uh, differential diagnosis is the, is the lumbar canal stenosis. So can you yeah, it might be, it might be, yeah. Can you advise uh, 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 all the young people who are hearing us that when they, they see such patients with, with numbness, as you said, with intermittent fatigue, uh, uh, even if they, if they see maybe on the, on the, on the CT scan some narrow in the, in the lumbar canal, are you advising them to, to perform uh, almost every time a, 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 a dorsal uh, uh, MRI? to search for a uh, uh, fistula? I think uh, MRI is good also for lumbar stenosis for the operative treatment. So it is useful to do. I, I don't know what, what are the resources in Morocco. Certainly you have many MRI centers, but also big populations. So it is, but uh, I, I wouldn't, I would recommend to do uh, MRI also in the, uh, cases of uh, lumbar stenosis, because, uh, yeah, it is, of course, in CT, you see them well, but uh, if there is something suspicious in the symptoms, symptoms, so no. I have seen one or two cases where the lumbar stenosis was operated on, and then they made MRI, and then there was uh, this Oh, wow. This is, this is very important. This is my yeah, question. Yeah. So you have seen yeah, yeah. patients yeah. who were operating yeah, yeah. before yeah, yeah. for a lumbar canal stenosis. So yeah, this yeah. is, I think this is a very important uh, uh, take home message for, yeah. for, for all, uh, all, all colleagues that uh, 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 pay attention not to, to operate patients quickly when you see on CT scan uh, a lumbar uh, canal stenosis because these patients can have the real cause of their of their symptomatology. They might have also a spinal tumor. Yes. They might have also a spinal tumor more common. Yeah. No, thank you. That's very important. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, yes, Saeed. Hey, uh, thank you again, uh, Professor Joa. You say that you operate uh, patients when uh, they were uh, symptomatic. Yes. I have, seen, I, I have seen only one incidental case. I told that it was here in China where they make very careful health checkups. Checkups. So, uh, so I, only I, one case, and I recommend it to be operated on. But the, all other were symptomatic. Good. Say, I ask you about uh, recovery or uh, out, uh, clinical outcome after surgery. I, 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 we know, us, all of us, that with the, the, the vascular consequences in the spinal cord, uh, like edema, like ischemic uh, or vascular ischemia in the spinal canal, 
in the in spinal the spinal cord so after surgery uh, among your uh, 19 patients uh, what about the, the, the clinical outcome please thank you oh you are always very happy to do good surgery but very disappointed because the patient is not improving it it is not improving the patients are not improving of course if you see the the myelomalacy the signs in the medulla they are not improving they are there what you can do by surgery is to stop the progress of symptoms this is very important so so you can stop the progression but you cannot promise the patients i heal you after this my operation you will walk uh, wonderful and have every function okay you cannot promise that this is the experience you can you can stop the progression with your operation but you cannot make the patients better uh, so, in, in, in what proportion uh, you have uh, improvement or clinical improvement? Uh, 10, 20, I or was half? Always, I was always disappointed that there are no improvements. They, you stop the progression of the lesion. I think this is a good result already because the final outcome is paraplegia in these cases. So oh, it is the outcome of this spinal neural fistulas is terrible. They will have paraplegia in short time or longer time, but rather short time usually. So I recommend to be operated on as soon as possible is not to follow up these cases because when they deteriorate, then the game is lost. You cannot do anything if the is total paraplegia. It doesn't help the operation anymore. Even you do it beautifully. Madi, have a question? Yes, yes. There, is, there is a question from uh, Professor Butterbush from Rabat. Uh, do you use any metallic objects preoperatively pre on the skin to localize uh, the level of fistula and the feeding uh, artery? But I showed in the videos that there was a medulla and blue sign. Uh, in X-ray department, you put the needle in the spinal process to inject medulla and blue. This is blue color. And take a picture where your needle is, and then you go to operation room. This is what we did because we didn't have hybrid room in Helsinki. So this is simple trick of uh, British neurosurgery. British neurosurgery didn't bring so much big things, made the first operations, but then this is one of the old tricks. Medulla and blue sign in the spinous process or also in the global operation you inject inside the intervertebra disc. This is accurate localization. It's very nice and fast not to use the X-ray in the operation room. So you have a good vocalization and other person is making the level. So I'm not using any metal. I'm not using any 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 localization inside in, in the operation room I have done in the, when I was in Nepal, they were using all the time. Siam, so we were using Siam there, but it depends on the culture and how you are, how you are used to do it. But this is a small, small good trick also for smaller hospitals when you don't have everything. So you go to X-ray department, put the metal and blue, and then you are certainly at the right level. Yeah, uh, There is no question. Okay, so... Uh, if there is uh, no more question, uh, I think uh, it's quite uh, quite late for for uh, for Dr. Juha. It's now ten uh, uh, and something in, in in p.m. in China, so he needs to have some rest. I would like to just uh, 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 to 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 thank uh, 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 the the organizers. Uh, uh, and, 
all the colleagues who, who were there to participate. And uh, I leave the last word to the president of uh, Spine and Spinal Cord Society, my dear Said, to, to conclude about this, uh, this uh, nice webinar. Uh, just to say uh, thank you again, my dear Juha, it was great to see you, you uh, in, in the camera and to, and to exchange and to know that you are going very well and that you are continuing very, very uh, uh, brilliant uh, career in China. I hope that you will, be, you will have the opportunity to visit us in Morocco or maybe someone of us to visit you in China. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Hamlichi, for this uh, uh, very nice animation for this session. And uh, would like uh, to uh, thanks again our uh, uh, great host for uh, this uh, very very interesting uh, presentation and accept to uh, share with us uh, his uh, very brief experience. And uh, we apologize for uh, this late uh, time for, uh, between Morocco and China. So uh, many, many thanks for you. Uh, I would like to thank all participation. Uh, we were uh, near than 120 participation. Thank you for all, uh, to all of you. And I would like to, uh, to thank my friend, uh, Dr. Mehdi and uh, Professor Asri for uh, your, uh, for her, their, uh, uh, thank you uh, again, and uh, see you next. Uh, I, we hope that we uh, we have uh, see you in the next webinar. Thank you and see you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was very nice webinar. Thank you very interesting. One information. Can I just add one information? You hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. Just to tell you that uh, 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 Professor Juha has edited more than 1,200 videos. Yeah, this is, all, yeah, they are in the internet, yeah. In all aspects of uh, micro neurosurgery, and they are ex excellent. They are really excellent, very uh, educative uh, uh, for everyone. And you can, of course, have all these videos free of charge and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and see them in any in any subject. Thank you again, Professor Joao. Thank you for advertisement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Bye -bye. see you in the next webinar. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you, Professor Joao. Thank you, Professor Hamlishi. Thank you, Professor Said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, hey, you Professor uh, Abdullah Zaid Zaidan. You are you are from. Uh, I'm from I'm from I'm Palestinian working in Saudi Arabia. Ah, welcome! You're welcome! You're welcome! You are, yeah, I've met uh, Professor Abdul Salam uh, several times in Saudi Arabia and in Jordan and in uh, uh, France, and uh, uh, we are honored to be with yeah, part yeah, of your uh, yeah, committee. Thank you. For and I see, yes, I see my dear, my our our great expert on uh, on endoscopy, Sibu uh, sir. Hi, hi, hi. It's great to, to, to have you. Of course, yes. I think there is no access to the, to the, the DAV fistula with endoscopy. I, I don't think that, that people why, are going in naturally. Why not? <laughs> yes, in the future. In the future. Uh, prof <laughs> prof Professor Boyosef. You, you, uh, you, re you remember that I, uh, I asked you uh, um, uh, next, uh, uh, before, the, if you have already do uh, uh, endoscopy in the pineal tumor by uh, supra cerebellar and infratontorian, you remember? <coughs> I do it. I do it yes. for the first time next uh, last last week. I will to show you uh, oh. my video. Yes, it's very, very nice. Very, Doctor very Said, nice. you give us. You will give us a case yes, report I would in like to see about it. that. Please. I, I will send you uh, this, uh, this video. Very nice. Uh, this will, okay, this will be for the next, uh, the next uh, webinar. <laughs> uh, thank you and see avec, you. With uh, great pleasure. Merci beaucoup. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, tout le monde. Merci, Professor Khamdisi. Merci.
that sales debt. 